In this video, I'm going to share with you three things that are majorly different between Amazon FBA and Amazon FBM, so that way you can make your own decision on which concept you'd like to go with. Now, my name is Bashar Ketu, and if this is your first time on the channel, uh, please consider subscribing. We drop brand new content about Amazon FBA and other topics that can help you simply gain financial freedom, uh, principles and values that can improve your lifestyle. So one thing that I came about a long time ago, or I started with, about six years ago when I started my journey online was a concept called retail arbitrage. And then from there, I graduated into online arbitrage. And then I realized that there was this thing called private label. And private label was really the thing that helped me scale my business to multiple seven figures per year. Now, with private label, it's simply what you do is you go to manufacturers. You, they white label their product to you. So, for instance, a pen. Uh, you grab a pen that's got no label on it. You put your own label. Now it's private label. Now it is your own. You are the only one that can sell it. You simply add value, create a differentiation, and then you sell it online. For me, the platform was Amazon. So then when I went to Amazon, there were two concepts that I could do. There is a concept called FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon, or there is FBM, which is fulfilled by Merchant. Now, the difference between them is that FBA is where you ship your products directly to Amazon. Amazon does the storage for you, does the fulfillment when an order comes in, and also will do your customer service. Now, FBM on the other side, you do the storing, you do the fulfilling. However, Amazon also does the customer service for you. So the two other things are similar, you know, are different. One of the things, which is the, uh, uh, the customer service, Amazon does regardless. Now, the second thing that I needed to look at is outside of the storage, you know, because at the time I only had one product, maybe I had five boxes, so it wasn't a big deal. But then as I launched my second product, third and fourth products, and then now I've, I had 30, 40, 50 boxes, and I was trying to buy in bulk because I wanted to decrease my cost of goods, um, then I was looking at some serious, you know, room for storage, and then I needed warehousing, and I needed all that stuff, right? So then this, the other thing that comes in place is that the, the actual fees, right, that Amazon takes from you. Well, for the Amazon has two different fees. They have the fulfillment fee and then they have the referral fee. So referral fee, both concepts hold it, which is pretty much Amazon allowing you the luxury of selling on their, um, you know, on their platform. It's kind of like a mall, a shopping mall. If you want to open a store at the mall, you need to pay them all a, you know, you need to pay them rent. So the same thing for Amazon, they're bringing you customers that are allowing to sell on their platform. They're going to take a cut. So that was in both. So I was like, all right, well, I have to do that regardless. The second thing was the fees that Amazon does for fulfilling. So that was 15% of net sales. So if you sell a product for $10, they're going to take $1.50. Where with FBM, I didn't need to give them anything. However, I needed to fulfill the product. So I needed to ship it to the customer. Then when I went to UPS, I saw that I was going to be paying double what I would pay Amazon. And then the third thing there is the storage fees, right? Well, the storage fees, usually Amazon, did, re, depending on the size of the product, the weight of the product, the time of the year, they can charge you anywhere from $0.10 cents per unit up to $0.50 cents per unit per month, right? Again, depends on the product size, weight, and the time of the year. In Q4 and Christmas time, the, the numbers are higher. In Q1, the numbers are lower, right? For me, you know, I was like, all right, well, that's another cost. For me... Again, when I had one product, five boxes, that was no problem. But then as I started scaling my business to two, three, five, ten, you know, products, and then now I had tens of boxes, now I need to go and, and rent some warehousing. Now, I could, you know, get away with probably 500 square feet, you know, maybe pay 50 cents per square foot. So we're talking about maybe anywhere between two to $400 per month that I was going to be paying for a warehouse. And that wasn't that bad, right? Especially if I'm going to stack it up with, say, five products, and then I just take that five, even if it was $500, I take that 500 divided by five products, that's really $100 per month. If I'm selling 300 units per day, uh, per month, really that's only like 30 cents per unit, you know? But then when I looked at the cost, it was almost about the same, but now my name was on the list. What if my business goes down? I still am stuck for a year to pay that rent, you know? Uh, at the time, my credit sucked. You know, I, I had just lost my restaurant. I had a whole bunch of things on my credit. And I, you know, just going and having my credit ran, any landlord would have looked at me and said, are you crazy? I'm not going to rent you anything. The other thing was I just needed to, that means I have to go travel and go to this place and then now pick boxes and ship and do all that stuff. And I just wasn't interested in that, you know, because now that was another job for me, you know. Now I had to actually be there so I can fulfill every order. 
Because in the beginning, again, I was selling 5, 10 units per day, but then once I got to 20, 30, 40 units per day, then I was like, I don't know if I want to box all those and then travel to the UPS store every day and do all that. It just was too much work for me. I was not willing to do it. And, you know, I just didn't want a full-time job that way. And that's why I even went online. Now, again, if you're enjoying this content so far, please consider subscribing if you haven't and smash the thumbs up button because it really helps us rank in the algorithm. What I also would love from you is that let us know in the comments what questions you have about this topic exactly because we would love to answer your questions. Um, it's very important for us to do that for you. So then the other thing they have to look at is scalability, right? How big do you want this business to go? Now, if you are somebody who's like, you know, I'm happy with two products selling 20 units per day, and this is the only thing I'm going to be doing. I'm okay with shipping the units myself. Great, do that. But if you are like me, and I want to scale this for as crazy as it can scale, for me, it was like, well, I'm at five figures per month, uh, per year. I want to go to six figures. Once I was at six figures, well, I want to go to seven figures. Once I was at seven figures, well, I want to scale to multiple seven figures, right? So if you're also in that situation, boxing units yourself is just simply not going to make sense. So it makes a whole lot of sense to give Amazon the money and just say, hey, man, just worry about it. And after all that, with FBA, and that's the cool thing, is with FBA, although you're paying Amazon all these fees, you're still left with a minimum of 25 to 30% in net profit after everything is said and done. That's using the FBA model. So to me, it was like, you know, any great business runs at 20 to 30%. So if I can profit 25% and not do any of the work, that's awesome. I'm just going to give Amazon to do it. Now, the other thing, the second thing they also have to look at is, aside from scalability, obviously scalability, scalability is one, but the second thing is trust and recognition. And what I mean by that is when you are an FBA seller, when you ship your product to FBA, Amazon gives you the prime badge. And that's very important if you are a consumer. When you go to Amazon, you're looking for that prime badge and you expect everybody to have it because that also means not only it's guaranteed by Amazon, but it also means that you get two-day shipping. If you are getting from a non-prime seller, that means it, God knows where it's coming from. I know my wife, we smoke hookah. And charcoal for the hookah cannot be sold on Amazon because it's hazardous material. So it has to come directly from the actual seller. And she knows when she needs charcoal, it's going to take at least a week or 10 days because it's coming from I don't know where, right? And they're going just through the, the traditional UPS, you know, uh, FedEx or whatever. And then they probably ship like every two, three days. They don't ship every day. They don't fulfill orders every day because they probably have warehousing, distribution. They sell, they do other stuff. And this is just kind of a side business for them, right? So from a consumer, I realized that when I went from FBM to FBA, my sales increased by 10 to 20% just simply because now the consumer trusts me more and because I offered the two-day shipping, right? And then the last thing that you also have to think about is the storage and the, the, the fees that, that Amazon is going to take from you. And that's really important for you to know because you want to see, you, you know, you want to look at your profits and how that's going to scale over time. In the beginning, again, if you've got one or two products, you know, it's not, a, it's not that big of a deal. But if you've got five or 10 or 20 products, that's going to simply eat up into your, um, into your profits. So it's really important for you to understand how your profits are going to scale with time and so that you can start planning for those times when they do come. Now, outside of that, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If this is your first time again, consider subscribing. Now, below this uh, video, you're going to see a link to a 25-minute uh, presentation where it walks you through exactly how FBA works and how we were able to leverage it and to help our you know, thousands of students simply be able to scale on Amazon. So again, consider subscribing and check out that uh, uh, presentation. Outside of that, hope to see you in the next video. Take care.